And joining us now with more on the threat of legal action against the Anti-Defamation League by Elon Musk surrounding X, formerly known as Twitter, is Arsen Ostrovsky, attorney and CEO of the International Legal Forum. Arsen, always great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. So a lot of issues to discuss here. Let's start uh, with the threat of a lawsuit. Does Elon Musk actually have a case against the ADL? Look, I, I doubt there's a, there's a real case in there. Um, I think Twitter and X now has had some uh, business issues for quite some time. But at the end of the day, I think we have to remember that uh, even, you know, putting, putting this in context, even before Musk took over, Twitter was already a cesspool of anti-Semitic hate and vitriol. But regrettably, under his leadership, it has essentially become a free-for-all uh, for anti-Semites, neo-Nazis and white extremists to uh, attack Jews, to express the most vile anti-Semitism. And when Elon Musk became involved in this campaign, in promoting the ban, the ADL campaign, he legitimized and he elevated all these haters. At the end of the day, Twitter is not a public platform. Twitter is a corporation and it's Elon Musk's responsibility, his choice, whether to be a free speech absolutist as he, as he uh, claims to be, or to be a responsible leader and to draw a line in the sand. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, Elon Musk clarifying uh, that he's not anti-Semitic, right? But he is engaging, as you mentioned, with sort of well-known, self-proclaimed anti-Semites, white supremacists, uh, boosting them on Twitter, as yeah. we saw with uh, the ADL. Mm -hmm. You know, what's your take on this? Look, I don't think uh, Musk is an anti-Semite. Um, I do think he might have a tendency to gravitate towards conspiracy theories. But the problem here is that in uh, engaging with these anti-Semites and white nationalists, he has elevated this campaign into, into turbo mode. Um, what was otherwise relegated to basically a small group of neo-Nazis, white extremists and conspiracy theorists uh, hardly had any notice, any attention until Elon Musk got involved with his 150 million plus followers and obviously then the media's attention and this blew up into uh, one of the most uh, you know explosive issues on the internet today and really um, also the you know the vitriol and anti-semitism we've seen in response is just been I think something unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Now you know you yourself uh, have a lot of followers on Twitter and I'm sure that you've uh, really encountered a great deal of anti-semitism. Do you really feel the difference sort of in uh, when you're online engaging with your followers before Elon Musk took over and after? Do you mean, do you really see a rise or feel feel that rise? I, I certainly do see um, a rise in anti-Semitism online. Um, you know, partly what, what happened is, you know, a lot of the issues which were in place and pre preventative measures prior have been removed. Things like moderation, things like um, removing material that's been flagged as hateful or inciting. Um, he's also brought back a number of uh, users who were previously banned precisely for expressing such kind of vitriol and hateful material. And we have also seen reports and surveys showing that in the more or less period since he took over, there's been a 100% plus increase in anti-Semitic material online. So Elon, I don't think, is, is, helping the ca is helping the situation by elevating this hateful material Although and, he and seems engaging. seems to be in denial about this or, or outright rejecting it. Um, look, he, he obviously he's, he's rejecting it and he's, uh, I think in a lot of ways he's using ADL perhaps as a scapegoat for his own uh, business issues with Twitter. But I think we also have to remember that in the bigger, bigger scheme, the ADL is just a, you know, they're not beyond reproach. There's certainly criticisms to be made, but the ADL is just a figurehead, it's just a scapegoat here because those people that are promoting the, the ban the ADL campaign, the white extremists and Nazis, they don't care that it's the, the ADL. Um, it could be any Jewish organizations for them, whether it's ADL or another Jewish group, which you can insert, they view it as part of this, some kind of Jewish cabal of uh, exerting domination, of trying to disrupt uh, existing modes of society, of endangering uh, white communities and so on. So really, ADL is just, I think, a figurehead and an excuse, um, which is, you know, I think all the more reason that we need to call out this campaign and, uh, and urge uh, Musk to show uh, responsible uh, and cautious leadership. I mean, let's talk a little bit about uh, anti-Semitism. You know, it's a growing problem online, but not just online. It's translating into the real world, uh, into real world violence. So what mechanisms or regulations are in place uh, today, if any? You said Elon Musk has pulled back some of those regulations. Yeah. Are there still any regulations in place? Is there anything being done to yeah. combat this anti-Semitism? Yeah. I mean, first of all, I think it's a very important point you made and that, you know, um, Words have ramifications, have consequences, and history has certainly taught us, and certainly when it comes to the Jews, that 
incitement and hateful rhetoric, um, it transforms into action, it transforms into violence. We have seen neo-Nazis parading in the streets, um, you know, so we, and this certainly follows in the last year, whether it's Kanye, whether it's uh, others who have now, uh, you know, acting and promoting this on Twitter. So words definitely do have consequences. And there are a number of steps that can and ought to be and should be taken both within the existing legal structures and also as a, corp as a measure of corporate social responsibility. Um, we've seen, um, you know, um, moderation of um, Twitter content has been removed. Um, we've seen that, you know, there needs to be greater transparency when it comes to algorithms and certainly to ensure that a uh, material that is uh, inciting such rhetoric is not elevated. Um, there needs to be great enforcement of laws within the different jurisdictions where Twitter X operates to make sure the material that is um, hateful, that is uh, inciting violence, is removed. Um, and I, I would add one more. Um, I think also when it comes to identifying what is or is an anti-Semitism, I think it will be an important step if uh, Twitter or Musk were also to adopt the IHRA International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism also to guide um, ex of what is and is an anti-Semitism online. All right, well, let's hope that we'll see a marked improvement uh, in online anti-Semitism. Arsene Ostrovsky, thank you so much for taking the time to speak thank with you. us today. Appreciate it.